Earlier this week, Microsoft Mechanics released a video looking at what we need to do to prepare for Microsoft 365 Copilot. Spoiler alert, there's still no general availability release date, but it is starting to feel as if we're in the home straight of waiting for these new tools. A lot of the content I've already covered in some way in these previous two videos, talking about how your data organization and governance will be essential pillars of how Copilot will work, but there were some more specifics that were shared. Let's take a look at some key moments in the video and then review what these might mean and when these options might become available. I'll sprinkle in some other information that I've got from elsewhere from Microsoft um, to add a bit of context where I can. Microsoft 365 Copilot is coming soon, but is your organization ready? Today I'll walk through the top three things that you can do to help get ready for the next transformation in how we work. Microsoft 365 Copilot leverages large language models that interact with your organization's data using the Microsoft Graph to generate personalized experiences. To make this real, if we look at the Copilot experience in Microsoft Teams, it can help you catch up on something that you may have missed, pulling together information from multiple sources to bring you up to speed. Or in Word, Copilot can easily write an entirely new document like a business proposal, leveraging content from your recent files. Now, a lot of the magic that makes this possible is the Microsoft 365 Copilot system on the back end. Now, this provides a powerful orchestration engine between the large language models, the Microsoft Graph, and Microsoft 365 apps. So we've talked about this previously. Um, in fact, Microsoft Mechanics put out a video a little while ago about how Copilot works and really went into depth around this orchestration engine. And at that point, I put out this video here um, that kind of overviewed that video. But it's, it's very interesting that we keep going back and seeing the same types of examples. So in a lot of these, uh, these videos, it's really cycling, regurgitating the same type of content that we've seen before. Discovered information along with the original user prompt is then presented to the large language model to generate an informed response, which is then returned back to the corresponding app. By design, Microsoft 365 Copilot respects user-specific permissions to any content or graph information it retrieves and only generates responses based on information that you, as a user, explicitly have permission to access. And this really is the first thing that you can do to get ready for Copilot. Get your information ready for search. Now, for example, if your organization already has the right information access controls and policies established, as your users search in places like SharePoint, then they will only have access to the information that they need and nothing else. So if your organization is already doing this, you're already one step ahead. And I think this is a really important point. Um, as I showed at the start of this video, my previous video on governance in the age of Copilot, um, the point has been made here that this is relevant to search and relevant to Copilot. These are not new things. Like your data governance within your tenant should be right. But we know that there are a lot of organizations where this isn't right, where people have more access than they need or less access than they ideally should have, and that is going to be very impactful to Copilot, but is also currently impactful. If not, the good news is there are tools and controls that you can use to get visibility into how information is being shared. And obviously you will only see this if you have sensitivity labels turned on in your environment. So you can put automated controls in place to ensure the right level of access and stop oversharing before you roll out Microsoft 365 Copilot, because Copilot will only retrieve information each user explicitly has access to. For example, if any given user within your organization has access to all or most internal information. And I think this is a really interesting view. Is this a, uh, a subtle ad that they're doing here for Apple Vision Pro? Because to me, this looks almost exactly like the examples that were given at the, um, the Apple WWDC event, where they showed off the Apple Vision Pro product. So um, the uh, TLDR, there, there isn't a big reveal at the end of this that says that Apple Vision Pro and Copilot are coming together. Uh, but I just thought this was an interesting visual because to me, it looks very, very similar to what we saw at WWDC. Then by definition, using search, they will most likely have access to things like sites and files across the organization that they should not have access to. 
Now, solving for this is an overall information access challenge, not unique to Microsoft 365 Copilot. And that's the important point. This isn't unique to Microsoft 365 Copilot. It isn't even unique to Microsoft 365. As our businesses have more and more information floating around, the challenge of how do you get the right information to the right eyes without sharing that information to the wrong eyes becomes all the more challenging for every type of organization. Um, so the fact that you're using this with Copilot, um, you shouldn't be worrying about this just in the context of Copilot. Pilot, you should totally be worrying about getting your data uh, protection, your data security, your governance in the right place, whether you're intending on using AI or not. The recommended approach here is to achieve what's called just enough access for each user within your organization to get their work done. Let's dive deep on the things that you can do to address this. First, at the file level, Microsoft purviews information protection along with its data classification controls, integrated content labeling, and corresponding data loss prevention policies can help you identify files in Microsoft Teams, in SharePoint sites, as well as OneDrive locations, and within email, and even in chat conversations, either containing sensitive information or classified content, then automatically apply controls to limit their access. So whether or not you plan to use Microsoft 365 Copilot broadly, getting to just enough access will improve your overall information protection. Now, the second thing to prepare for Microsoft 365 Copilot is to get the prerequisites in place, and the third is to assign Microsoft 365 Copilot licenses. Now, you'll find the wizard in the setup page under apps and email. I'm assuming that once you get access to Copilot, you get to, to see this. Um, or this may be something that's rolling out over time. There isn't anything in the um, in the message center that's talking about this particular feature right now. Um, so I'm imagining that as it stands, you only see this, uh, this setting available if you are part of the early access program. And once you get started, you'll see it lists out which apps and services you need in place for the full Copilot experience, in addition to having the right Microsoft 365 enterprise licenses in place including access to Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise and web experiences, a work account in Azure Active Directory, files in OneDrive, the new Outlook app for email, Microsoft Teams apps across platforms, and the new Microsoft Loop experience, and semantic index for Copilot. And for a comprehensive list, you can find the prerequisites for Microsoft 365 Copilot and supported apps at aka.ms slash m365 copilot. Now, as they've just said, you do need Microsoft 365, not Office 365, E3 or E5. But I've also confirmed this morning that um, you could be using Business Standard or Business Premium as well. So when I first saw this, I was like, oh no, this requires anyone that's on Business Premium to upgrade to E3 or E5 in order to get these, these capabilities. But that is not the case. You will be able to add Copilot onto Business Standard and Business Premium if you're in those business SKUs rather than the enterprise SKUs. Next, the third thing to do is to assign Microsoft 365 Copilot licenses to users, which can also be done here from the Setup Guide Wizard. Now, last week, I, um, I put out a poll on the YouTube channel asking people how much they thought Copilot was going to cost. And the outcome was that most people thought it would be free, but only included with E5. Now, um, what we're seeing here is that there are separate Copilot licenses, which implies to me whether you're using E3 or E5 or Business Standard or Business Premium, that you're going to be adding on a Copilot license. And for whatever SKU you're using, that Copilot license is probably going to cost something. Um, in general, where something is added into the standard license, it's added as an option in that license. You can turn it on and turn it off within the license SKU that you've got. Um, when something gets added on, in general, not always the case, but in general, there is an additional cost for it. There hasn't been any pricing information that's been released as part of this announcement, but I think that we can probably imagine that there is going to be some cost involved in adding on Copilot in the way this is presented here. So in licenses, you'll see a listing of available Microsoft 365 Enterprise and Microsoft 365 Copilot licenses 
that you can assign right from here. Establishing a center of excellence for your internal users to share their experiences and ask questions is a great way to find and work with internal champions as you roll out any new service or set of capabilities. Giving people the ability to share what's working best for them, such as the prompts and details that people can use for generating great content and responses using Copilot can really go a long way to drive better adoption and results as well as build a strong internal community. So the center of excellence that's being talked about here is going to be a Teams template, um, which is going to be available. I think the target is around August for this. Um, and this is going to be a template that um, brings together a lot of information about Copilot and also automatically pulls in information that is being published on Microsoft blogs about Copilot to give a really kind of one stop place that uh, your people that are involved in Copilot adoption in your organization can go to find out about it and get the latest information. So those were a few things you can do as an admin to get ready for the next transformation and how we work with Microsoft 365 Copilot. So I think that's really interesting. And in addition to that video, there were a couple of other materials that were also shared yesterday focused on Copilot. The first was this page here, which is a, um, a Microsoft Learn article, which has the prerequisites for Microsoft 365 Copilot, and you can access that as was said in the video at aka.ms slash M365 Copilot prereqs. And a link will be down below for that. Um, and you can see here that uh, exactly the same information is outlined as was outlined in the Microsoft Mechanics video. Um, Again, um, there isn't that data point that you're able to use business standard and business premium licenses as well as E3 and E5 licenses. Uh, but I was on a webinar this morning that confirmed that. Um, so that has been confirmed by information that I've seen from Microsoft at this point that you will be able to use Copilot with those small business SKUs. Additionally, there's a new place that you should go and check out there is a tech community blog for Microsoft 365 Copilot um, that you can see here. Um, and this is, again, the same information on how to prepare for Copilot, going through very similar information. So you can see here that Microsoft really seems to be kind of ramping up on giving information about Microsoft 365 Copilot. There is no date that has been released about when we're going to see Copilot pilot in general availability and there has been no pricing information that has been shared at this point but I think that we can take from this that we may be getting into the home straight of getting ready for co-pilot however I think that what Microsoft is doing here is really laying out some foundations that I've been trying to lay out for the last couple of months in saying that if your data within your tenant isn't really ready for prime time when it comes to things like search, then if you run out at rollout copilot right now, you're gonna run into a whole host of problems. Um, you're gonna have people seeing information that they shouldn't see, or they're going to be relying on things that are provided by copilot that aren't right because it doesn't include the right information. So really any effort that you can put into working out now what is going on in your uh, data is State, the better. So I do the majority of my work with smaller organizations and particularly for smallish organizations. Often IT needs are outsourced elsewhere. Most of the organizations that I work with don't have an in-house IT department or if they do they're often sharing the load with outside experts and very often at that kind of scale there's a lot more effort and a lot more thought that's given to the issue of security in as far as we're securing the perimeter of our organization, then there is about the issue of how data, how information flows inside the organization. So I think there's a big opportunity here for small businesses and for the specialists that support them to start having conversations about how do we work with our information? How do we empower our teams to make sure they have the data that they need to do their 
their job, but also how do we secure that data by making sure that they don't have access to anything that they don't need to do their job. And this is something that really wasn't so important when everyone was dealing with file shares and there was kind of a, a code of honor around around those and things were done a bit smaller scale than they are now. Um, it became a bit more important where people were having the ability to search like they can now and search for things and surface information um, pretty quickly. But when it moves into Copilot, there's going to be even more need to start thinking about these issues. So I think this is a really good opportunity now to look back at those governance issues, um, to look back at those policies and procedures around how you use information internally and just get yourself prepped if not for Copilot, then for the modern era of the scale and breadth of data that we have and the concerns that we should have about protecting that data, both for our organizations and for the stakeholders that we have, whether that be our employees or our customers. But certainly go and check these resources out. I think this is uh, this is exciting that we're now getting this kind of information about Copilot because we have to assume that if we're getting this kind of information about Copilot, that Copilot will be with us sooner rather than later. I will continue to keep you updated as I see more information like this. But until the next video, bye bye.